So this is the uh, Biquad Yagi that I've been selling now for uh, 2.4 gigahertz for over a year and I've sold over 500 of these and uh, most people have fed back to me uh, saying how good it actually performs and uh, it is a uh, good performer for its size you know it's such a small footprint and uh, it's extremely powerful for its actual size and uh, one of the uh, considerations that uh, I wanted to make when making the longer range one was that the longer range by Quad Yagi had to be at least 30% more powerful than this one otherwise it wasn't really worth making and you couldn't expect people to uh, pay the higher price tag if it wasn't going to uh, you know be at least 30% more powerful than this one now when I first started to actually uh, look at a longer range one I did uh, look at this and uh, the uh, original design and I was hoping that I could just add some more parasitic elements to this to increase its range and uh, why I would want to do that is because it would bring the cost right down because basically you'd have uh, the uh, elements and the reflector and everything for the uh, original 2.4 gigahertz one and then you could just uh, have manufactured the extra elements so then you could just uh, make this longer it would be uh, modular and keep that cost really really down and uh, it, you could actually just upgrade your uh, standard uh, by Quad Yagi if you wanted to but unfortunately that didn't work too well now one thing you have to remember about this antenna is that it's a hybrid, it's a uh, biquad and it's also a uh, yagi. Now with a yagi you just can't keep adding parasitic elements and uh, expect to get more and more range and more power from your antenna. There's uh, a tipping point and I can't quite remember what it's actually called now but uh, you, once you start adding too many parasitic elements it starts to have a detrimental effect on your antenna and uh, its performance will drop off quite rapidly because it uh, the extra elements in there will actually hinder the performance of the antenna and that is what was happening with the uh, longer range one the uh, once I started adding uh, say four more elements to this it started to affect the performance so a nine element by Quad Yagi taking this kind of footprint and design would not perform as well as this uh, four element by Quad Yaki, for instance. It, uh, you know, really hindered the performance. So I had to go back to the drawing board and I had to do a little bit of investigation on uh, Yagi antenna design because Yagi's are not something I've been particularly interested in in the past. But um, I did have to do quite a lot of reading to overcome this and uh, rethink the design from scratch. So this is the design that I've come up with. This actually works really, really well. A lot better than the 30% uh, increase that, that I actually set myself to have when making a longer range uh, you know, version of this antenna. And uh, because of the uh, actual phenomenon of adding extra elements to the uh, Yagi design, and then uh, you get that to that tipping point where it starts to affect the performance of uh, the Yagi itself because this is a hybrid a biquad and a Yagi that was a lot lower so just adding getting to about nine eight or nine elements was starting to have an effect on performance and uh, it was a lot lower than the effect starts in a uh, true uh, Yagi antenna so what I did to overcome that is actually go outwards and add uh, double biquad elements to the first three and then single biquad elements to the uh, final three elements and this works out really really well now as for the reflector itself I've actually gone with brass the reason I've gone with brass is because it's a little bit stronger than copper the uh, copper was a little bit too soft and uh, I would have had to have ordered the copper a little bit thicker to uh, make up for that but then it will actually add quite a lot of weight to the antenna so I've gone with brass and uh, you know it's just a reflector it's a passive reflector it's not tied in to the antenna in uh, any way so really any metal surface will work as a uh, reflector for this design now I've included in the description a uh, download link if you want to actually 
download the uh, artwork in PDF form to have a go at making your own elements for your own long range uh, version of this antenna but uh, the measurements are as follows if you want to check them to make sure that your printer has printed them out at the correct uh, size the uh, main driven element here is uh, 31.5 millimeters at a quarter wavelength down the side here the uh, second sorry the uh, first parasitic element is uh, 30 millimeters and the second parasitic element is 29 millimeters then we've got the three single parasitic elements and they are 28 millimeters 27 millimeters and 26 millimeters now the reflector that is uh, included in the artwork is the original one that i was going to etch onto pcb and the size of this wants to be the uh, minimum reflector to actually use with this design now the brass one that i've decided to go with um, i didn't cut it down i actually purchased this 100 millimeters wide 300 millimeters long and i've just used that as it actually came to me although i think i'm going to round off the uh, size just to make it uh, you know fit in more with the actual uh, design of the yagi itself but uh, this size of reflector this needs to be the uh, minimum that it actually needs to be you don't want to go any smaller than this now before we actually move on to the spacings between the elements themselves there's something else that you need to take into consideration when you're making a double bicord element on pcb and that is that uh, at this point here and this point here the uh, elements the tracks themselves are going to cross over each other now uh, there's a couple of ways you can do that on a pcb you can actually uh, drill a small hole here and a small hole here and then thread wire on the underside uh, take up any slack and then solder it onto those two points there and this is what I've actually done with this uh, first prototype here now of course you could use a double sided PCB board and uh, just etch out a small section of track on the underside but doing that it's going to be a lot of waste and especially having this manufactured you've actually got to pay for the copper that you don't use for the copper that they actually uh, remove so uh, i don't think cost is going to allow me to actually do it by that method but you could quite easily just uh, etch away all the copper on the uh, other side and just leave a small section of track there and then drill down a couple of vias and connect them at those two points now another method that you can actually do is one that I've done here with this. This is an old prototype from a few years ago when I was actually messing about with uh, parabolic curves trying to get uh, PCBs to actually bend and uh, you can't actually do it. It, it. it actually gets to a point where even if you apply heat to the uh, fiberglass it'll just snap in the middle. But uh, what you can actually do is insulate this part of the element here and then get yourself some of this uh, thin copper tape uh, tape it over the top of the insulator that's here and then flood it with solder so you've got a nice joint going across here but this is insulated here so it doesn't make contact with that part of the element and that's exactly what I've done here and here now as far as the spacings between the elements are concerned it's pretty straightforward the uh, main driven element needs to be 40 millimeters away from the back reflector and the rest of the parasitic elements are spaced out at 20 millimeters now if you want to use a curve reflector like i have then uh, you need a spacer here that's 40 millimeters and uh, two spacers at either end that are 30 millimeters long and then you will get that uh, nice curve effect to your reflector now also included in the pdf is this small square here that you can use to mount on your uh, tripod mount here now uh, I have cut it down a little bit so it's a little bit shorter than what's in the uh, actual uh, PDF and the reason I did that is because there was a little bit of lip there and I wanted to tie it into this tie point here and in order to get uh, this on a tripod I had to remove this small section of the PCB and uh, these actual spacings are uh, not so important I just used 40 uh, millimeters because I had them for these here
So as far as the measurements go for this then, that's about it really. I've just got a few uh, niggles to iron out to how am I going to have the uh, double by quads elements made with the manufacturer. But uh, as far as cost is concerned, it's probably going to cost in the region of about £75. Although uh, I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, I am actually seriously thinking of uh, releasing this and the uh, original uh, Biquad Yagi and the 5.8 GHz Biquad Yagi as a Kickstarter because if it's successful I can put a uh, bigger manufacturing order in all at once and that'll make it slightly cheaper to actually produce so I'll be able to uh, you know offer a much cheaper price on the Kickstarter because uh, I'm going to do a bigger volume run but um, I don't think there's ever been a successful kickstarter antenna so far although i may be wrong i haven't actually uh, come across one i think a couple of guys came out with a uh, diversity setup and i think that went into production but as a uh, antenna on its own i don't think there's been a successful one on kickstarter or any of the others so far to my knowledge anyway So hopefully you just got a uh, rough idea in that small test how uh, much more powerful this is over the original Biquad Yagi. And the original Biquad Yagi is a uh, powerful little antenna for its small footprint. The, uh, you know, I've sold over 500 of those now and people feed back to me saying how good it actually performs. And uh, there's even uh, the uh, University in Durham here in the UK, they've purchased six Biquad Yagi's off me and they've actually set up a uh, wireless point-to-point -point link on their campus there sharing a uh, Wi-Fi signal so uh, it does actually perform well but uh, this is definitely uh, a lot better over that longer range and that's what I was trying to actually get when uh, you know I don't want to actually sell a long range version of this if it wasn't so uh, long range if you like but um, definitely this newer design does uh, perform much better than the uh, original idea that I had for this. So any questions or comments drop them below hopefully I'm going to have a uh, forum up and running pretty soon so you know when I answer questions uh, they won't get buried in the YouTube comments so we can have threads on the forum for uh, specific antennas and different devices and uh, hopefully it'll be uh, a lot more organized so you can find answers uh, to questions that uh, other people or myself have answered and uh, you know just a lot better organization of uh, information but uh, you know if you've got any questions or comments drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them and if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and uh, I will have a uh, proper long range test video out uh, pretty soon I'd, by the time I've edited this I'd have probably shot that one on the outside so they'll probably be back to back so hopefully you'll join me on the next one